Welcome to this video. And in this video, we look at stability analysis for discrete time systems. Stability analysis for discrete time systems. The stability analysis of time continuous systems can be analyzed or can be undertaken in the S plane. Similarly, stability analysis of discrete time systems can be analyzed on the Z plane. The transformation from S plane to Z plane is carried out as follows. The transformation from S plane to Z plane is carried, is carried out as follows. Z is equated to exponential ST, where X is the complex number gamma plus J omega, from which we can write Z is equal to exponential gamma plus J omega, T, which can be broken down into two parts as exponential gamma T multiplied by exponential J omega T. So this term will give us the magnitude, while this term constitutes the angle. In the Z, in the S plane, stability of the system is considered such that when all the poles fall to the left hand side of the S plane, the system is stable. And therefore, for stability of time continuous system, gamma must be on the negative rail axis. If you have to consider stability for time continuous systems, gamma must fall on the negative rail axis, and therefore, gamma is less than one. In the Z plane, therefore, the magnitude of Z is obtained from the magnitude exponential gamma T. And since gamma is less than one, it's negative. Therefore, this term will also be less than one. And it can be seen that the stability in the S plane, which considers a stable system to be a system whose poles fall on the left-hand side of the S plane, in other words, gamma is negative, corresponds to a region within a circle of unity radius in the Z plane. So we have to consider a plane, a circular plane, a plane of which is a complex plane of real to imaginary axis. The stability of the system of the discrete time system is going to be ensured so long as the poles of the system fall within a circle of radius one. And if all the poles falls within a circle of unity radius, then that system will be considered to be stable. And therefore, the easiest way or the fastest way to establish the stability of the discrete time system is to establish the poles of its characteristic or its Z transform function. If all the poles fall within a circle of unity radius, then that system is considered to be stable. We'll illustrate this in form of an example. Suppose a system, a discrete time system, is given such that its characteristic equation is Q of Z is Z cubed minus 1.8 Z squared plus 1.05 Z plus 0 0.2. So 
sorry, this is negative 0 0.2 is equals to zero. So this is the characteristic equation of the discrete time system. We are to analyze the stability of the discrete time system. We have to analyze the stability of the discrete time system. To determine the stability of the discrete time system, we determine the roots of the characteristic equation. And if all the roots fall within a unit circle, then the system is said to be stable. To determine the roots, we saw for Z, given that Z cubed minus 1.Z squared plus 1.05Z minus 0 0.2 is equals to zero. Allow me to use MATLAB to obtain the solution for Z. So given our Q to be the polynomial with the coefficients one, negative 1.8, 1.05 and negative 0 0.2. We determine the roots of Q using the function roots into Q. From which we notice that the three roots are Z1 is equal to 0 0.8, Z2 is 0 0.5, and Z3 is equal to 0 0.5. We're saying that our Z1 is 0 0.8, Z2 is 0 0.5, and Z3 is 0 0.5. From which we notice that all the roots have values less than one, and therefore the system is stable. Stability analysis of discrete time systems can also be analyzed using the Raoult stability criterion. Stability analysis of the discrete time system can also be analyzed using the Raoult stability criterion. Given our characteristic equation as a function of Z, the first transformation we carry out is a transformation from a polynomial in Z to a polynomial in W by applying the transformation Z is equals to W plus one over W minus one. We transform our characteristic equation as a polynomial in Z to a polynomial in W by replacing Z with W plus one over W minus one. Once we have the polynomial in Z in W, then we formulate the Raoult array. We formulate the Raoult array. And from the Raoult array, we check on the signs of the terms of the first columns. The, the terms of the first column, we check on their signs. If there are no sign changes on the terms of the first column of the Raoult array, then that system is said to be stable. If there are sign changes, the system is unstable and the number of sign changes indicates the number of poles that do not fall within a unit circle in the Z plane. And that system is considered to be unstable. We will illustrate the use of the Raoult array and the Raoult stability criterion when determining the stability of a discrete time system. Suppose we have the same system defined by the characteristic equation Q of Z is Z cubed 
minus 1.8z squared plus 1.05z minus 0 0.2 is equals to zero. We said that the first step is to transform the characteristic equation from a polynomial in Z to a polynomial in W using the transformation Z is equals to W plus one over W minus one. And therefore our polynomial in W becomes W plus one over W minus one cubed minus 1.8 into w plus one over w minus one squared plus 1.05 w plus one over w minus one minus 0 0.2 is equals to zero. If we multiply both sides by w minus one cubed, then we obtain w plus one cubed minus 1.8 W plus one squared W minus one plus 1.05 W plus one into W minus one squared minus 0 0.2 into W minus one cubed is equals to zero. Upon expansion, this will yield 0 0.05 W cubed plus 0 0.75 W squared plus 3.15 W plus 4.05 is equals to zero. And this is our polynomial in W. Using the polynomial in W, we formulate the round array as follows. So our polynomial in W is given as 0.05 W cubed plus 0.75 W squared plus 3.15 W plus 4.05 is equals to zero. We formulate the round array as follows. This being a third order system, then we'll start with W cubed w squared w power one and w power zero then we fit in the terms of the first two rows as 0 0.05 0 0.75 3.15 and 4.05 then we determine these terms in these terms to determine the first one we determine 0 0.05 3.15, 0 0.75, 4 0.05, in terms of the product of the terms of the minor diagonal minus the product of the major diagonal divided by the first term in the second row, which is 0 0.75, as 0 0.75 multiplied by 3.15 minus 0 0.05 times 4.05, and then we divide by the first term of the second row is 0 0.75. We divide this by 0 0.75. And this will give us 2.88. This term becomes 2.88. So we are talking of this product minus this product divided by the first term. 
So in the next term, because there are no other terms here, this term will be zero. Then for our first term here, we take this product minus this product, product of the minor diagonal minus product of the major diagonal divided by the first term. And you notice then this will give us 4.05. Then we look at the first terms of the array and or the first column in the array and you notice that the first term is positive, the second term is positive, the third term is positive, and the last term is positive. All the terms of the first column, all the terms of the first column are positive. That means there are no sign changes, no sign changes, and therefore the system is stable. And that is the Rao stability criterion as used in stability analysis for discrete time system. In my next video, I'll be discussing the jury's stability test. For discrete time systems. In my next video, I'll be discussing the jury stability test for discrete time systems. Otherwise, that is the end of my presentation. And thank you for watching this video.